الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم والفرقان المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقضى ربك لا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا صدق الله العظيم The ayah of the Quran I recited to you comes from Surah Al-Isra which is also called Surah Bani Israel This is the first half of the 23rd ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about two things very important things the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us and the right of other beings. Let's first look at the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. Allah says, وَقَضَى rabbuk." It has been decreed to you by none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. He decreed it upon you. أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهِ Do not worship anyone. Never worship anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And oh Allah, how will we going to know about this? Well, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid the principle earlier on. O oh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, tell these people, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ You claim that you love Allah. Wow, what a big claim you have. Then ittabi'uni, then follow the Prophet. If you say la ilaha illallah, but don't say Muhammad Rasulullah, Allah does not even need that la ilaha illallah from you. Then how dare you reject his Prophet? Until and unless you say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you're not Muslim yet. So, O Prophet, tell them, Ittabi'uni, Yuhbibkum Allah, Allah will love you back. Allah will love you back. You want His love? You make claims to love Him, but don't follow the Prophet. Ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul. You have to be obedient to Allah and His Prophet. That's where the obedience lies. And right away after explaining this very phenomenon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about the rights of the people around you. The rights of the people that you come in contact with and says, you know, the first right on you is for your parents. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And honor your parents. Honor them. Follow the guidelines that is given to you by Allah and His Prophet. Your parents, when teach you on that guidelines, yes, you follow them because you're following the guidelines. But if the guidelines that they're trying to preach to you go against what Allah and His Prophet wants, the guidelines from Allah and the Prophet, they supersede. But, don't be disrespectful. Don't dishonor. In the life of Prophet ﷺ, one of his biggest enemy who did not accept Islam yet, Abu Sufyan. There was a treaty between the people of Medina and Makkah at this time after the Salah Hudaybiyah. He came to Medina and he visited his daughter's house. His daughter, Umm Habiba, was the wife of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umm al She opens the door and there's this guy, Abu Sufyan, her dad. But a disbeliever. A biggest enemy of Islam. The guy behind the battle of Badr. The guy leading the battle of Uhud. The guy participating in the forefront of the battle of Ditch. And she doesn't know how to react. She asks him to come inside, but she goes to the Prophet and said, My dad Abu Sufyan has come, how am I supposed to react? And the Prophet said, honor him. At the end of the day, he's your dad. 
The respect of the parent is there. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. What does Quran say? His dad, the Quran talks about. Some people call him uncle, but the Quran says his dad. Disbeliever. One of the biggest disbelievers in Mesopotamia, in Babylon, where Ibrahim alayhi salam was. He was a disbeliever to an extent that he used to carve the idols that the people would worship. But look at Ibrahim alayhi salam when he's communicating with his dad. He says, إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ When he said to his dad, يَا أَبَتِي Oh my father. Look at it. What is father doing? Creating, doing, giving the, doing the biggest sin. But his approach, يَا أَبَتِي Oh my dad. لِمَا تَعْبُدُوا Why do you worship? مَا لَا يَسْمَعَ The ones who don't listen. وَلَا يُبْصِرُ They can't even see. وَلَا يُغْنِيَ عَنْكَ شَيْئًا They can't even benefit you. يَا أَبَتِي Oh my dad, I know you're knowledgeable in your own religion. Look at the respect here. The sentence I'm about to tell you is extremely respectful to approach a person who claims to be knowledgeable but misguided. He says, إِنِّي Indeed, قَدْ جَاءَنِي Has come to me مِنَ الْعِلْمِ From the knowledge مَا لَمْ يَأْتِكْ Did not come to you. So, فَاتَّبِعْنِي Follow me. Don't follow me as an individual. Follow me because I am the messenger of God. So, اِهْدِكَ صِرَاطًا سَوِيَّ I will guide you to the right path. I'll show you where the right path is. This ummah asks every day, many day, what do you ask? اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ And then we say, Ameen. Oh Allah, guide me. And Allah says, Okay, you want to be guided? ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Take the book. There's no doubt in it. هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Guidance for those who want to achieve piety. Righteousness. So Ibrahim a.s. then goes back and says, يَا أَبَتِي Oh, oh my dad. لَا تَعْبُدِ الشَّيْطَانِ Do not worship the Satan. You're not worshipping Satan. You're, you're not a devil worshipper. But you're worshipping fake, false gods. You make them with your own hands. You sell them in the market. I mean, how can you sell a god? How can you do that? Don't do that. That's satanic way of doing it. He's misleading you. Inna shaytana kana lirrahman yasiyya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has many, many attributes. But look at the attribute Ibrahim alayhi salam picks. Ar-Rahman. The most compassionate. Allah is most compassionate, but shaytan... On the other hand, despite the fact Allah is so compassionate, He is the one who is misguided. And He is rebellious. He goes to your nafs and He makes you rebel. You go out to people who don't believe in God, they're very rebellious. To them, they're rational thinkers. But these rational thinkers, what the Quran says... On the day of judgment in Surah Al-Mulk, what does the Quran say? These people will say, we wish we would have paid attention. We wish we would have articulated the truth. These so-called brains will take that approach on that day. So Ibrahim salam says, Ya Abati, oh dad, I love you. I love you. That's why I'm scared for you. Inni akhafu. I'm scared for you. I love you. I, I don't want to see you in the hellfire. A lot of us claim to love our families or kids. When was the last time you told them, I love you? I care for you. The reason I want you to be guided is because we want to go in Jannah together. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that you, your wife, your kids, I will put them together in the Jannah. If they're in the lower level, they will be uplifted to higher levels. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
This is the most merciful we are talking about. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. He's giving us all of this information. So Ibrahim al Islam is telling his dad about his emotions. Now this is the point where he has come to the final thing. He said, Inni akhafu ami yamassaka adabun min ar-Rahman. That the punishment of Allah who is ar-Rahman, the most compassionate, it's not easy to make the most compassionate mad, but what you're doing will make him mad. The unconditional giver mad. And then he will get you. And he will punish you. And when he punishes, that is everlasting. <laughs> they will be in the hellfire forever. And they will neither die nor live. It's no joke. So he says that أَن يَمَسَّكَ عَذَابٌ مِّنَ الرَّحْمَانِ فَتَكُونَ لِلشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَّا Then you will be friends with shaitan forever. Don't make that kind of friendship. Message to all of us. Who do we hang out with? Who are our friends? What is influencing us? In the days of social media, you open your phone and here's an influence in front of you. I ran this, into this grandfather the other day, and I was very sad after a couple statements that came out of his mouth. He said, my grandkids visit me. My grandkids visit me, but they don't visit me. I'm like, how is it possible? He said, whenever they're over, they're busy with their phones. Is that what you call a visit? Now think about it. What do we do? We go and meet people and we are on our phones. We go out to eat. We take out our phones and start taking pictures of food that we are eating and we start distributing it and now we are wondering how many likes I get. So why did you even go out in the first place? Where is that quality time? Even though on the social media it says family time. What were you doing there? What exactly are you doing there? You're not with your family. You sit in the car after a day at school and your parent look at you and say, how was your day? Uh, really? Is this how you're supposed to communicate with people? Well, anything excited today? No, nah, boring. Wow. Put yourself in the place of that parent. And now think, if somebody communicates to you every day like that, that'll be heartbreaking. But it is the parents who still every day ask the same question, despite the fact they know the answer. But they're like hoping for one day, one day. By the way, if your parents pick you up from school and drop you off, you are one of those fortunate Americans Small percentage of those fortunate Americans who have this luxury. Most of them go to school on school bus, come back in the school bus. So when you have the time with your parents, spend it wisely. In that car, the moment you hop in the car, Assalamu alaikum, talk about your day. You're home, your dad comes from work. How's your day, dad? At the dinner table, what, what happened today? Anything exciting? Build a relationship. Very important. It's not the topic for today, but we're going to take a lot of time. But inshallah, if I ever come back, I'll talk about the relationships from Surah Yusuf. Beautiful story. Very moving story. And how the father and son relationships, relationship between brothers, it's talked about in the surah, beautiful surah. Now notice, Ibrahim alayhi salam is talking so gently and nicely, and look at the dad's response. Qala araghibun anta an ya Ibrahim. Are you after my gods, Abraham? Why? What did they do to you? La illam tantahi la rujumannaka wahjurni maliyya. If you don't stop, I will stone you to death. Who is this talking? The father. 
the father to Ibrahim alayhi salam, get out of my house. Leave at once. Very harsh. If anybody says that, we react. We react without anybody saying that to us. Unfortunately, we have become very ignorant, disrespectful people. But what does Ibrahim alayhi salam say? Look at his response. Listen to me carefully. He says, Qala salamun alayka. O oh, dad, peace be unto you. And what does he say? Sa'astaghfiru laka rabbi. I will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. I will keep asking for your forgiveness. Innahu kana bi hafiyya. He has truly been most gracious to me. Look at the response. This is the response of a believer. Ibrahim salam is asking us of all relationships to take this approach in life, not the approach of his father. That's arrogance. That's ignorance. Don't be ignorant. Allah guided us. Look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the amount of hardships he bore. When he conquested the Mecca, what did he do? لا تثريب عليكم اليوم Forgiven. Forgiven. Even if you do not believe, anybody closes the door of their house, don't fight with them. Anybody enters the Kaaba, don't fight with them. Anybody who doesn't draw a sword, don't fight with them. Anybody enters the house of Abu Sufyan, the leader of Mecca, the same guy I told you about earlier on, one of the biggest enemies. Anybody who enters the house of Abu Sufyan, don't touch him. Don't touch. Al-Aman, Al-Aman, Al-Aman. One of the generals drew the sword and said, Al-Yawmu, Yawmu, Al-Mulhamah. Today we'll take the revenge of Makkans. Prophet ﷺ took the flag from him, handed it over to his son. It was a very good move because when you take something from the father and give it to the son, the father doesn't feel bad about it, rather is boastful. My son will be the commander. SubhanAllah. And said, no, this is not the day to take revenge. This is the day of marhama, per me, peace, mercy, forgiveness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us over and over again, now that we are entering the month of summer, Kids will be home. Colleges, universities, schools. Kids' parents' time will increase. Maybe you plan vacations. Maybe you plan activities with each other. Whatever it is, give quality time. You know, this guy, put him away. Time yourself. Husband and wife sitting in the same room for hours, don't talk to each other because they're both on TikTok. It's nonsense. Really? And then they go to bed, they sleep. Where is the communication? We want to connect with the rest of the world, but we don't want to connect with the people that we are living with. So this story, I brought these stories to you is a way that when we are entering the month of, months of summer, enter positively, with energy, with respect, with honor, love each other. Allah chose these relationships for us. Think about it. Allah chose them. There must be a wisdom and hikmah behind these things. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم يا غفار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إننا كنا من الظالمين ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا كلنا يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا كريم يا غفار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وأقم الصلاة